one of the difficulties that comes along with that is having each particular SaaS application have its own login. And so now we've, we've transformed ourselves back 15 years from before we started using Active Directory. Wow, okay, that is, that is much less complicated than I thought it actually it was. It really is, yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 10th Magnitude's Manhattan's Project. I'm Michael Gibson, marketing manager here at 10th Magnitude, your host. And I am joined today by Neil Sly, one of our senior consultants here at 10th Magnitude, who has uh, decided to join me in the Gray Jacket Club. Um, so thank you very much for joining me today. I, I've really been looking forward to getting you on the show. It's an honor to join the club. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I hope you enjoy your Manhattan. Me too. You know, I was a little worried about those. I think I went just a little, little bit heavy on the vermouth on mine. Mine's good. Good. Mine's good. Yeah. I'm glad. Anyway, so you're here today to discuss identity um, and, and as part of that, Active Directory, right? Very much so, yeah. Active Directory in the cloud, if okay. you will. So, you know, when we talk about uh, Active Directory in the cloud, what do we really mean? Do we mean... Um, Active Directory inside of Azure, as in like, a, like an infrastructure as a service offering? Or do we mean Azure Active Directory as sort of a, a platform as a service offering? And uh, both exist, and uh, it's important to understand sort of the differences between each one mm -hmm. and the benefits and uh, the detractors between each one. Okay, so, so to clarify, we're, we're discussing the differentiation between Azure Active Directory and Active Directory in Azure. Correct, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Okay, I have no idea what the difference between the two is. Good. Okay, Good. So, so why don't we start with a, a quick summary. What is Azure Active Directory? Azure Active Directory is a service offering from within Azure. It's offered as a pay-as-you-go sort of PaaS offering, if you will, or platform as a service. And uh, it's exactly like, well, not exactly like, but similar to if you wanted to um, have Microsoft host your SQL servers. Mm -hmm. So we're familiar with uh, Azure SQL mm -hmm. and the differentiations between hosting um, SQL in a virtual machine inside of Azure or using Azure SQL. It's the exact same thing with Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory is just a service offering um, by Azure. Primarily now it's uh, revolving around the identity space, but uh, we have some pretty neat features coming up uh, in preview where you can actually join machines to that actual Azure Active Directory. Okay, all right. So, so what how does that differ from simply Active Directory in Azure? Yeah, so you know the use cases are obviously different, but it, it differs because you know Azure um, hosts VMs for us, and so Active Directory inside of a VM, uh, you know, kind of comes along with the same problems that you would have with Azure. Excuse me, Active Directory on prem, right? So you know you need to maintain the patching of the uh, of the virtual machine. You need to maintain. Uh, the Active Directory environment itself, which is no easy, you know, task. Mm -hmm. Certainly no small task. Uh, you need, need to be concerned with things like backups and all those types of things. Mm -hmm. So just the normal care and feeding of Active Directory, you're still concerned with. The only thing we've done is uh, take the Active Directory server that was in your data center and simply move that workload into the cloud. Okay. And that has a number of different benefits. You know, resiliency is one. Getting a, a domain controller out of your physical environment, maybe you don't have a a separate uh, DR you know, type data center. So you know, getting a domain controller out of your physical uh, environment is, is certainly a, a great thing, but uh, it just differs from Azure Active Directory. You've explained uh, a bit of the differentiation between Active Directory in Azure and Azure Active Directory. How does that play into identity, which is, which is what you wanted to talk about, which is what we're, we're discussing through the, this Active Directory conversation? Absolutely. So, you know, single sign-on is really where it's at. With the multitude of, of cloud-based offerings that we have now today, mm -hmm. even outside the Azure stack, you know, things like, uh, um, you know, Salesforce and all these other, um, you know, third-party SaaS-based offerings, um, one of the difficulties that comes along with that is having each particular SaaS application have its own login. And so now we've, we've transformed ourselves back 15 years from before we started using Active Directory. Mm -hmm. when, you know, we all had different passwords, different um, 
password expiration times, different username formats, all these kinds of things to authenticate into these myriad of applications that we have to use for day-to-day -day jobs. Mm -hmm. And so we've transformed the data center by moving to SaaS-based applications, but we've taken our identity a step backwards. And so that's really one of the things that Azure Active Directory is able to solve for us. And so again, we're able to do single sign-on to these third-party applications, you know, things like, even things that would compete with Microsoft, such as Dropbox, um, Box.com, any number of things. There's a, there's a, a huge list of sort of pre-made, ready-to-go applications and a catalog, and you know the configuration um, is really just a number of clicks to sort of enable your users to authenticate into that application. Um, one of my favorite examples is, is is Twitter. So you know we do a lot of social media here yeah. at tenth magnitude, yep. and you know, larger companies. Um, I always I'm always wondering, you know, who holds the username and password to a to a Twitter account? For a large corporation, like we'll say, you know, Coca-Cola or something, um, you know, the old way would be there's a there's a username and a password, and it's stored under a sticky note, and the the marketing team keeps it underneath their keyboards. You know, when somebody leaves, you have to be remember to change that credential and uh, um, you know offboard that employee properly. With Azure Active Directory, we can actually allow folks to authenticate into an application such as Twitter using their Active Directory accounts. We can even do it automatically. So we can say, if you're a member of the social media marketing team, you automatically have access to the Twitter account. And then, you know, when someone departs the company, we simply disable their AD account like we would any other time, and then they've lost their access to Twitter. Now, how does this differ, though, from, from simply using a, a, a solution like, is it like OnePass or, or, or uh, like a, a master password manager? Yeah, you know, that, that's a great question. So, you know, I, personally, I use LastPass. Uh, it's, it's a great product. But, you know, the difficulty with LastPass is, you know, I authenticate to LastPass with just a username and password. It's my private, it's, it's my private solution. It's, it's really um, not exactly a, an enterprise-level solution exactly. Mm -hmm. And certainly, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't tie back to Active Directory. Uh, it also really doesn't do a, like a like a single sign-on. Uh, it's simply a um, a solution for the storage of credentials. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are specific attributes of Azure Active Directory that'll actually automate the password change for you. Mm -hmm. So you don't even really know the password to the Twitter account. It's simply all managed by Azure Active Directory. Huh. Okay. So. So say there there are connectivity issues to to Azure or the Active Directory VM. I assume it's hosted on a VM as as if it were a server. Uh, you know, and no, and that's the great thing is it's just a service. It's just a service. It's just like Azure websites or Azure SQL. There is no VM to log in. So so you're you're removing even even the virtual infrastructure on it. Like you're you're not floating a, a virtual machine Absolutely. to serve as your Active Directory server. Right? Absolutely even. not. No, with Azure Active Directory, it's simply just a service. Wow. Okay, that is that is much less complicated than I thought it actually it was. It really is. Yeah. Okay. So so walk me through an implementation. So you have Act, uh, Azure Active Directory set up. You onboard a new employee. Walk me through their first steps through utilizing this service or benefiting from this service, even invisibly. Yeah. So someone might not be aware. Of, of of Active Directory serving serving this purpose, but walk me through what happens when when they begin their new job. You've onboarded them. What happens next? Absolutely. You know, so there's sort of a, a separate several components that can come into this, but uh, the key to really all of this is just that we can onboard employees using the same procedures and standards that we do today. So you know, what's step number one? Uh, we open up a help desk ticket, and the user gets an Active Directory. Account. That's step two. Step one: get hired. Step one: get hired. By the way, we're hiring. We are. We're going to include a link to our careers page in the video description below. Go ahead and check that out after you like, comment, and subscribe. So step one, get hired. Step, step two. Step two, get an Active Directory account. Awesome. Excellent, right? And so, um, you know, step three, uh, provision that user properly, right? Put them in the right groups. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they're, they're, they're a marketing person. Make sure they're in the marketing, you know, Active Directory group. Sure. Basic kinds of things. You know, and then in the background, uh, a tool that we don't even really need to worry about called Windows Azure AD Connect synchronizes that identity up to the cloud, up to Azure Active Directory. That happens without anyone's intervention, and you know, within a matter of minutes, the user has access to the cloud resources that would otherwise you know, take maybe even several hours to provision. So it, it's really a sort of a seamless process. Now what happens if um, you know, we forget to add uh, 
uh, the new user to the marketing group, mm -hmm. or maybe someone switches from finance to marketing. You know, mm -hmm. um, Azure Active Directory has a uh, sort of a self-service uh, groups now, where users can can find groups, request access to the groups, and then allow the group owners to allow that access. So no longer do we have uh, the IT team or the help desk having to manage groups. We've sort of allowed the the users to uh, you know self service themselves and enable the enable the group owners to add ownership to that uh, excuse me membership to that group. And I think that uh, it comes down to value for me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you know if I am an Active Directory administrator and I spend uh, you know 100% of my day uh, adding users um, to groups, creating users off you know offboarding users, these types of things, mm -hmm. um, you know that's that's a great position. But if I go on vacation, or if I leave at five o'clock, I'm not providing any value to the company. My value is strictly limited to 40 hours a week, you know, as long as I work throughout mm -hmm. the, you know, throughout the month, throughout the year. Um, if I can put in a tool such as, you know, Azure Active Directory, and allow users to, you know, self-service groups or do self-service password resets or these types of things, um, I've now added value to the company that transcends me being there. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not needed. It simply means that I can redirect my energies into other things that provide better value for the company. That way when I take a vacation, I'm not having to pick up my phone or pick up my pager. Does anybody even have pagers? You know, doctors? Uh, doctors, sure, yeah. I'm not having to you know, worry about I, these I, types I, of I things. I hope my doctor isn't running the Active <laughs> Directory server of whatever <laughs> hospital they're working in. Pro probably not. I would hope. Um, but you know we're not we're not having to worry about on call for a password reset or something like sure, that. Sure, sure. We're we're enabling these users to do it themselves, and we're able to direct our attention to other places. Excellent. But I'm I'm glad I know this because I I now feel I have a, a clearer picture of what Azure Active Directory is, and I feel like I can speak more intelligently about it. I I, I sincerely hope um, that we've addressed some some questions that that people have had about the service because is is it an add-on service as a part of the general Azure subscription? Yeah. How how does how does getting into it work? Yeah, you know, there's a whole other episode. On, okay. on that, really. Okay. Um, there are some basic components to Azure Active Directory, uh, and then there's some, some premium components. There's actually a product called Azure Active Directory Premium, and that's where some of the things like uh, you know, multi-factor authentication, uh, self-service, those types of things come into play. Excellent. Well, Neil, thank you very much for joining me. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad we were able to get you on the show. I'm glad you enjoyed your Manhattan. Uh, to you folks watching at home or at the office or on the train, hopefully not in your car, um, Check out the video description below. You're gonna be able to see some more information about how to get in touch with us. Uh, also how to get in touch with Neil directly if you'd like to reach out to him on Twitter. Uh, as always, please like, comment, or subscribe if you liked this video to keep up to date on all of our uh, most uh, recent pieces to the Manhattans Project. We're also gonna be launching some additional videos uh, this year as well, so keep up to date on us, uh, keep up to date with us there. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I, I really appreciate everybody continuing to, to listen to me sit here and go, oh wow, technology. Because <laughs> um, I feel like uh, I, I learn a lot with you guys. So thanks very much, and thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Have a good one. <laughs>